Hey there, Liz LeCue here, and today I want to talk about a very important subject, the language of leadership. And in today's series, I wanted to talk about these four areas when it comes to speaking in the language of leadership. The first is assignments. As a leader, we want to give assignments to the people that we lead. And one of my favorite phrases to use when giving an assignment is, your first step is, or your next step is. So for example, your first step is to take a look at the videos so you can see if this is something that you'd like to do. And maybe when you're working with a teammate, you can say, the next step is for you to go out and share our mission with two new people today and then text me back as soon as you're done doing those two. Assignments are great for you to use as leaders because it helps you do checkerboard leadership, right? Where you're, you're making a move, they're making a move. You make a move, they make a move. And you wanna meet them where they're at. You don't wanna fire hose them with all sorts of information and talk about levels A through Z when they're still stuck on A, but you're trying to get them to get to level Z. Does that make sense? So the first step is to do this. And then once they're done with that, give them the next assignment. The next step is to do this. Now let's talk about the leadership language when it comes to challenges. I know that in business, it's inevitable that you will eventually have some kind of challenge that comes up. And for me, a favorite term in leadership that I like to use is the word, I understand. I understand. I understand that you can't make the meeting because you can't find a babysitter. I, I completely understand. I mean, single mom, you're amazing doing all that you're doing, taking care of the kids, balancing homework, working. You know, I understand, okay? So that's an important thing when it comes to leading people when challenges come up. But then the next word I want to empower you with is, I want to encourage you. I understand that you can't make the meeting, but I want to encourage you to do whatever you can to find a backup sitter, maybe ask the neighbor, maybe ask mom if she could babysit, maybe ask your cousin, you know, until the meeting, which isn't until next Monday comes for you to be able to find that babysitter. So when it comes to leading people, when they deal with challenges, you want to relate to them and say, I understand. And then you want to say, I want to encourage you. All right. Next, when it comes to leading people, you want to talk about stories. You want to use positive stories to share positive examples of what you're trying to portray, or you want to use stories with negative examples sometimes of people who made the wrong choice or the wrong decision. I do this all the time with my kids, you know, whether they know that it's happening or not. I'll just say, you know, hey, Susie studied really hard seven days before the test. So when the test came, she just was, it was no pressure for her. She didn't have anxiety. She was able to pass with flying colors. I'll also use a negative example of how, remember when Bobby said he really struggled because he waited until the night before to study for that test? Well, so you can use stories, positive and negative examples to help uh, portray your, uh, what you're trying to get across. And lastly, you wanna paint the vision. Every time you have an opportunity to speak life into an associate or somebody that you lead, you always wanna be painting the vision of where they're going. When I was serving full-time at the church just a few years ago before the pandemic, they would always encourage me to remind the volunteers that were setting up the church and closing down the church every single week. It felt like moving day every single Sunday unpacking the van with all the stuff and repacking the moving truck with all of our stuff. And I had to constantly thank everyone for their, uh, and appreciate them for the hard work that they were doing, but to paint the vision of what we were doing to build the church for the bigger cause. Now here in our company with Legal Shield, just imagine USA Today says to us, 
Prepaid legal services sounds like healthcare coverage before it turned into a trillion dollar industry. Now I want to remind you of something. It said before trillion. Now health insurance at one point was at the same market penetration that we're sitting at today and eventually became a trillion dollar industry. Life insurance at one point was sitting at the market penetration that we are at today and became a trillion dollar industry. So it's just a matter of time before Legal Shield goes to where we're at today and becoming a trillion dollar industry. And you have an opportunity to position yourself and be a part of this incredible movement as we are going from the two to 4% market penetration nationwide that we're at today to a trillion dollar industry. I'm proud of all of you for continuing your commitment to grow and get better. As we grow ourselves, we attract more business to ourselves and attract leadership to our teams as well. I'm proud of you and look forward to seeing you next time.